Hi everybody, welcome back to LearnBiology.net. I'm Frankie and in this lesson we'll take a look at some overall chemical equations for photosynthesis and aerobic respiration. In addition to learning some new terminology and listing some important biological processes that require energy. Okay, let's get started. Your learning outcomes this lesson are Number one, understand that life on Earth is directly or indirectly dependent upon photoautotrophs. Number two, know the overall chemical equation for photosynthesis. Number three, know the overall chemical equation for aerobic respiration. And number four, list key biological processes that are energy dependent. So how important is photosynthesis? Well, if you think about life on Earth for a moment, life is solar powered, either directly or indirectly. And remember, Life is dependent upon energy, and of course, it is the chloroplasts, which are found in plants and other photosynthetic organisms, that capture and convert light energy from the sun. Light energy is converted into chemical energy, and the process of capturing and converting light energy into chemical energy is called photosynthesis. So, either directly or indirectly, the process of photosynthesis sustains life on Earth. And that is a pretty important process to know about. So, we've established that life needs energy, and the primary source of that energy is through photosynthesis. And of course, cells are also able to release energy from glucose through cellular respiration, and we'll learn all about that process too. Plants are organisms known as photoautotrophs. So what are photoautotrophs? Well, you know that photo means light and auto means self. The term trophos means feeder. Therefore, a photoautotroph is a self-feeding organism and photoautotrophs use light as their source of energy. Light, which is used to synthesize useful organic substances. And it isn't just large plants that are photoautotrophic either. Some algae and some prokaryotes can photosynthesize too. In photosynthesizing organisms, it is the chloroplast that is the site of photosynthesis. And in the following lessons, you'll learn about the structure and function of the chloroplast and the biochemical process of photosynthesis. But first, let's summarize the chemical equation for photosynthesis. So here we have six carbon dioxide molecules plus six molecules of water, and of course, light energy. The reaction is catalyzed by the photosynthetic reactions to give us a molecule of glucose and six molecules of oxygen. Now don't forget, you must be able to write this reaction down. So photosynthesis is the biochemical process in which light energy is used to make glucose from water and carbon dioxide. Note that the light energy is converted into chemical energy in the form of glucose, and this chemical energy, the glucose, is stored until plants release it through cellular respiration. Why do biological organisms need energy? Well, when learning A-level biology, you could be asked why you need to know about photosynthesis and cellular respiration, and therefore why organisms, and thus, biological processes need energy. It is important that you can list a few key examples. So, plants need energy. Number one, photosynthesis. Know that photosynthesis is a series of biochemical pathways, a sequence of reactions that is energy dependent. Number two, active transport. Always a good example for an energy dependent process. Remember, in plants, it is active transport that allows for the uptake of minerals via their roots. Number three, DNA replication. Number four, cell division. And number five, protein synthesis. All are good examples of energy dependent processes. Now moving on to animals, animals are heterotrophic. Hetero means other, and trophic, as we've talked about before, means feeder. So literally, this means that all heterotrophic organisms are unable to produce their food like autotrophs can. They, the heterotrophs, must obtain their food and in turn their energy from other means. Heterotrophs are therefore consumers. For example, animals eating and consuming plants and or other animals. 
and they do this in order to obtain their energy. And once again, we return to the key point that all life, well, either directly or indirectly, is dependent upon the photosynthetic organisms for food and oxygen, which don't forget for us is a very important byproduct of photosynthesis. Some key examples of why animals need energy. So number one, we have movement. Specifically, you'll need to talk about muscle contraction. Number two, we have regulation of body temperature. Third, we have active transport. Four, we have DNA replication. Number five, we have cell division. And number six, we have protein synthesis. And again, these are all good examples of why animals need energy. Of course, there are countless examples of why and how plants and animals require energy. And the ones I've just mentioned are some of the more commonly expected answers. So make sure you have those boxed off. The final part of this lesson is to consider the fact that cells also release energy from glucose via cellular respiration. Both plants and animals are able to release stored energy from glucose. And it is this that is then put to work to power all biological processes in a cell. And you'll learn about both types of cellular respiration. Number one, you'll learn about aerobic respiration, which is respiration with oxygen. Number two, you'll learn about anaerobic respiration, which is respiration without oxygen. You'll learn that aerobic respiration produces carbon dioxide and water. And it is important that you know the overall equation for aerobic respiration, which is as follows. So we have glucose plus six oxygen molecules, which gives us six carbon dioxide molecules, six molecules of water, and the energy which is released. Now, in contrast, anaerobic respiration in plants and yeasts produce ethanol and carbon dioxide and releases energy. However, in humans and animals, anaerobic respiration produces lactate and releases energy. Now, despite being a short lesson, that is a lot of information that you must know before continuing. So make sure you review this lesson as many times as you need, complete the accompanying lesson booklet, and then you'll be ready to go on to learn about photosynthesis and cellular respiration in more detail. So until then, take it easy. See you.